Yo, right there guys, this is Cobb and this is a long overdue Sunday's episode. Um, I feel like I've been absent for quite a while from the channel here and my Facebook, so before we get onto some questions um, from you guys for the Q&A, I really want to address that and let you all know what has been going on with me. So I have basically resumed my old working post um, as a skill capped editor on their website. I have a flat and rent to pay and food to put on the table among other things and basically this channel has not been bringing in enough money lately and for me to say that, as someone who is happy to make the bare minimum, as long as I am happy with what I am doing, you guys have to know that me and Sophie were struggling. For now, I'm working around 6-7 hours a day on editing skill capped guides every day of the week, and while this abundance of hours is only temporary, I'm sure that you guys can understand how much less time it is leaving me for gaming and creating my own content for the channel. In a few days from now, I will be working less hours with skill capped and be having weekends free. So that is definitely going to give me more time again. I could maybe dedicate Saturdays to recording videos like the Dueling series, which a lot of you guys have been asking about right now, um, and that I'd love nothing more than to continue working on. It is going to be at least a few days though, probably a week even, and um, before I'm going to have time to work on the bigger video series again, videos like Dueling with Cobb, uh, the Destruction Spec Challenge, maybe even Devastation 4. These are all videos I love making and that you guys really, really seem to enjoy, so do not think that they are gone. They really are not, and um, they will be making a return just as soon as this first week of very high workload with skill cap is over. So I do apologise if you guys aren't too keen on arena videos, arena clips are just much easier for me to record and edit than anything else right now, and I know that not all of you enjoy them as much as my other videos, but I'll try and make them interesting and hope that all of you guys at least give them a chance. So basically picked up my old job, right now working a ton of overtime, which sucks, but it has to be done. Um, I'll be finished with the crazy hours on Tuesday, I think, and then I can look to find a balance between skill cap work and getting back to making the videos that you guys really, really appreciate. So I hope that explains everything. Now onto the questions, starting with Shane Wellholm, who asks, Are you still doing the Dueling with Cobb videos, or have I just been missing them? I'd love to see maybe a whole series of detailed videos on strategy for dueling each class and spec. And the Dueling with Cobb videos take a lot of work to pump out compared to some other styles of video so as I mentioned above I just haven't been able to dedicate time towards working on them lately but they are definitely not gone. You can expect to see plenty more episodes of the dueling series before this expansion is over. And as for detailed guides dueling each class I did try and do that way way at the start of this expansion but I kind of dropped the ball and just stopped making them and by the time I decided that I wanted to start working on them again there had been a couple of big patches that basically changed the way classes played a lot. Shadow Priests in particular, so the few guides I had already uploaded uh, were actually outdated and needed redoing and this was just something I couldn't see as being fun, so I ended up not doing it. When Warlords of Draenor comes along though, this could be something I really try and stay on top of. I could try and have out um, duels against one new class and spec every week. And then once I've done them all, I could get back to the Dueling with Cobb series and I think that's a pretty sweet plan um, and it's definitely something I'm going to consider doing. Edvis Sehelic asks, have you ever tried some kind of sports like gym or football or something? And I played football or soccer, I guess, if you're from the US, and I was pretty good, I think. I'm left-footed and right-handed as well, which I guess is just a fun fact. But because of that, I would usually play at left-back because no one else was even close to being naturally suited to that spot on the field. So yeah, I was always better at defending than anything I realized very, very early on. That if you want to get the ball from someone, don't watch the ball. It's far better to watch their feet or even their entire body. Look at the way their shoulders are facing where their eyes are looking and I got pretty damn good I think and at second guessing exactly what my attacking opponents were looking to do and being equal to it almost every time. Matthias Christiansen asks, is there anything in life that you learned the hard way? When I was around seven years old I had two dogs and I absolutely loved them. Uh, they've pretty much been there ever since I could remember. I'm a huge dog person even today as a result but one of them was getting old. He was called Floyd. He was a big brown dog a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, he was a proud ass dog, um, he could run for miles and was really, really protective of me and my family and he stayed this way almost all of his life. Eventually though, when I was around 7, he slowed down a lot, he was losing his sight, um, he was losing a lot of weight, he was losing his sense of smell, he couldn't find his food bowl on his own and he couldn't run like he used to, he couldn't keep up with our other younger dog, Peggy, and eventually he just wasn't in good health at all, he was actually pretty sick. So one day my dad took me to the vet with Floyd, he said the vet would need to have a look at him. Um, so I hopped in the car and I didn't really want to go, I was just a kid. Um, I was 7 years old, I just wanted to play football or play my games or whatever, but 
I thought I'd come along for Floyd's sake, I sat in the back, put an arm around him, and because he didn't like the car very much, he preferred to be out and running. When we got to the vets, my dad took him into the room and I waited behind in the waiting area, um, and as my dad entered the room with the vet, um, a woman came out and I saw she was crying straight away. It was obvious as hell really and um, she clearly wasn't a vet working at the place i remember she looked around 26 years old she had shortish black hair that stopped at her shoulders and she just looked really really upset and i just panicked and i kept my head down i didn't want to make eye contact i was seven years old i didn't have a clue what to do basically and this woman and um, went to the counter to get a tissue from the receptionist and she sat down a few seats down from me and beside the receptionists we were the only people in the waiting area it was quiet as hell I didn't even want to breathe too loudly and I just kept my eyes on the floor. So she was crying next to me for a while and she started blowing her nose and it was like a childish moment of just utter stupidity. I was so desperate to keep quiet and I was almost giddy and hearing her blow her nose so loud actually made me laugh. And when I laughed, there was no way that she wasn't going to hear it in the empty room. So she looked at me and I think I just looked away. I was so embarrassed and even more embarrassed that I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. I can barely remember how long this went on for, but she eventually got up and left the clinic altogether, which was honestly a relief to me at the time. Almost directly after the moment she left, the door my dad had took Floyd through open, and my dad walked out with his head down and Floyd's leash in his hand. But Floyd was not on the end of it, and this memory is so old that I can't be sure, but I think I even might have seen a brown shape lying down on the table in the room behind him, and then the door closed. And it was like a pane of glass inside me somewhere had shattered. And until that moment, I never experienced such a downward spiraling of emotions. And just like the woman who'd been in the room with me minutes before, I cried with absolutely no shame and without caring at all uh, what the people around me thought about it. And this time it was my dad who was asking the receptionist for the tissues. On our way back to the car though was when it really happened. I remember seeing it and almost panicking at first, but we ended up just exchanging a watery glance. The woman from the waiting room walked right by us on the path of the car and that was when I really really felt terrible because I knew exactly what she was going through at that point. And I remember thinking that she must have been happy to see me crying. She must have put two and two together and figured out why I was so upset all of a sudden and she might have rightly thought of it um, as karma. And I've got to be honest if I knew who this lady was and there was a way I could message her or something I would do so to apologize. But this was definitely one of the most changing days of my life. My dad I must have known that Floyd wasn't coming home from the vets that day so he brought me with him so I'd really understand what it feels like to lose something I love um, and in turn respect and cherish the things that I have a whole lot more. A lesson though that he hadn't meant to teach me was more to do with morality. I didn't really understand what the woman in the waiting room was so upset about but that shouldn't have given me the excuse to make fun of it because lo and behold when I was in the same position as her I broke down just as much as she did. It gave me a new respect for anyone having a bad time that I feel like I can still carry around with me even today. So those were two things I had to learn the hard way which both happened in the same afternoon and when I was just a kid and it's one of my most well guarded memories that I make sure to remind myself of every now and again. Mihai Konstantin asks, hey Cobb, how do Pingu and Craze get under your spotlight? Um, they're just friends, literally. I didn't select them from a pool of candidates or anything, I didn't accept um, a random battle tag ad or anything like that. Uh, we played some RBGs together back in Cataclysm. I thought they were both fun to play with, so when chances popped up for us to arena together, um, I was definitely up for it, and we've been playing together in our little clan now for a long time. And finally, Marin Krinjak asks, how do you act when you are drunk? And I'd say with more confidence. Um, the way I describe alcohol to everyone is that it makes you care less about consequences, and that is it. That is why people say controversial things. That is why some people don't care if they come across as violent. And for me, I stop worrying about being in the spotlight so much. I'm usually a very reserved um, guy, but once I've had a bit to drink, I will shout to be heard. I'll jump in on conversations and happily talk to people who I don't know, and which isn't what I'm usually like at all. The way Sophie describes it is that I'm still Tom. I'm just in a very good mood, which kind of makes me happy. I can't help but think that personally, alcohol brings out the true faces of people. And whether they are angry, sad or happy drunks, I think that having a good amount of drink stops the person caring about covering up for whatever reason. In my case, I guess it's just low self-confidence, um, which just evaporates with enough alcohol. Literally awesome questions this week, thanks for those guys. And now to cover the donators over the past few weeks. Frederick Raven donates 38 euros, um, which is a crazy amount of money. That really helps me out, so thank you very much, man. And I promise you, I will get started on your intro that we talked about eventually. Thomas Sari donates 2 euros. 
saying, hey Cobb, do me L here first of all, I love your vids so much when Bao pisses me off, I just check your vids and my morale goes up and I want to say thank you for this, here is a little money for more bacon, I know it's not so much but unfortunately I can't afford more at the moment, keep it up man, you're amazing and I got one question, when will we get a new vlog? Appreciate every donation hugely man and more bacon fundage is always a good thing and as for a new vlog I'm going to try and fix something up uh, pretty soon for sure. And so that's all for this episode guys, a very heartfelt one for me for sure and um, reciting old memories like that but hopefully it had some of you guys thinking uh, the same way it had me thinking when I was a kid about the kind of person I was so thanks for watching everyone, really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll catch you all a little bit later.